cut my finger. I think I'm a terrible salesman. What's up everyone, welcome back to the shop. We got a really fun project today. We're gonna make a media cabinet center thing. You know, you probably have electronics in it. This is for a customer who designed the entire thing. Every aspect of this project was designed by this person. It is my job to take it from their head and make it real. Now, in hindsight, I, I'm thinking this is gonna be a lot more work than what I originally planned. I think I'm a terrible salesman. Here's the concept. It's gonna be made completely out of walnut. We're gonna have a couple shelves, a divider in it. We're gonna make some boxes that will fit inside a couple of those. And the customer wants this in two pieces. We're gonna have a bigger piece and then a smaller piece. So, okay, that's what he wants. Not a problem, we can do that. We also need to make sure we have a back to it. And then we need some sort of door, a door that, that kind of folds open, like, like a garage door almost. No, well, not, not a garage door, a garage door. Let's just get started. But when it comes to After a ton of milling and glue ups and sanding, I've got all these panels that are gonna be the media center. The two big ones are gonna be for the outside perimeter. So what I plan to do is waterfall miter joints. So basically you, you make a miter joint and you try to get the grain to, to wrap up and around the best you can. So these are so big, it's gonna be kind of hard to wrangle them on the table saw. So what I think I'm gonna do is cut them to their sizes that I need. Then I put my blade at a 45 degree angle and then I cut the miters off. I do have a video on how to do this exact joint, uh, so you can always check that out and get even more details. I still got a whole lot to do on this, obviously. I gotta work on the joinery, we need dividers and shelves and boxes and a door and all kinds of stuff. I'm thinking I'm gonna do the back next because it's the biggest piece and that way I can get that big glue up out of the way, it's done with and I can move on. So let me see what I got. Ow. All right, I think if I take this, I resaw this guy in half, I should be able to flip it over, glue it together. I'll get a really nice book match for the back panel. It'll be plenty big. I treated the back panel the same way I would do for a box bottom. Took the pieces over to the table saw, cut a groove in them until that groove was wide enough so that the panel fits snugly into place. After all of that's done, then I was able to cut my back panel to its final dimensions, make sure everything fits together. Now I have this grain that flows from the bigger piece into the smaller piece. So even though they're separate components, when you put them together, they look like they're supposed to be together. Now, we had a couple more things to do. Obviously, all the interior stuff, like the shelves and the dividers, those types of things. But before I get to that, I wanna make sure I get all of the joinery, everything else tightened up before I do anything on the inside. Now, we've got miter joints here. And in general, miter joints just aren't super strong. But I do have the panels in the back, that helps. All the dividers and shelves inside, that's all gonna tighten it up. So, 
I think the miter joints will be plenty strong for this. Yeah, the, the miters will be strong enough. Okay, I'm gonna reinforce the miters. I'm lucky enough to have a domino, so I'm gonna put some dominoes in all the corners. I know this thing's gonna be really strong. If I didn't have a domino, I think what I would do is splines. Just like the video I did a while back on three different ways to make miter joints, one of them I showed how to put splines in the miters. That really makes them strong. So that's what I would do if I did not have the domino, but I do have the domino, so let's roll with that. The cabinet is looking fantastic, but I did have something that came in the mail that I'm really excited about. These came in a few minutes ago. They are post box doors. Look how cool these look. Old school, they got the knobs. The back, you can see the gears. These look awesome. Now, I don't know if they're functional. I gotta play with them. But even if they're not, I'm still gonna figure out a way to get them into the cabinet, at least because they look so cool. New day in the shop. It is time to work on the interior. So this is the way it's gonna break down. About two thirds of the way down, I'm gonna have a shelf that spans the entire length of the big cabinet. Then we'll have a divider and then have a shelf on the left and on the right. And then we'll do shelves in the smaller cabinet, but let's not worry about that right now. Walnut is a beautiful wood, but at the same time, it can be a bit gnarly. There's often little pitted areas and knots. So this is what I do. I keep a bottle of black CA glue in my shop for this exact reason. I will fill those areas with the glue, spray a little bit of accelerator on that, and then in a couple of minutes, I can sand that down flat and just move on to the next step. The plan is to have a door that sits inside the frame of this, so it's all flush, which means that the shelves on the inside need to be inset. They can't be all the way out to the edge. So when I was first contemplating how I wanted to make this, the plan was to do stop dados. So you cut a dado, but just before you get to the edge, stop short, and then use a chisel or something to clean it up and square it off. I did dados recently whenever I made the storage cabinet underneath my table saw. I also did dados whenever I did my lumber cart. So I kind of don't feel like doing dados with this. Instead, I'm gonna turn to the domino again, use that to do all the shelves on the inside. But if you wanna see how to make dados, check those videos out because I did a ton of them. As you know, in most of my videos, I go over as much as I can as far as the sizes and dimensions, while also trying to keep the video as short as possible. In this case, you notice I haven't done that with this. I haven't given you a lot of information, and that's on purpose because this is not my design. Someone else came up with it, and I just it doesn't feel right for me to give you all the details on a design because it's not my information to give you. But I'm pretty sure you could figure things out on your own. It's a pretty straightforward build. I really want to glue this thing up, but I can't just yet. I got to figure out how to do the door. So I did glue up the door panel. So that's looking really good. And the plan is to have the door flush with these outside edge, and then it's going to be able to lift up. So I bought these pivot hinges and I've never used these before and they didn't come with any sort of templates or anything. So I'm going to have to just figure out how to do them. I'm going to drill a hole in the inside corners here of the sides but I can't just get my drill in there. So I'm gonna take the sides off, drill the hole, then I can reassemble it. Then we can try to get the door in there and adjust it. There's a lot of variables with this.
almost ready to apply finish and do the glue up, but there's one last step. Right now the door is a little bit long, so you need to cut it to its final size, which is going to be just past the bottom shelf so you have something to grab onto. Also, the designer wants to have magnets that will hold the door to that bottom shelf, but those magnets need to be completely hidden. So here's my plan. I am going to route a slot on the underside of the shelf, and then I can stick the magnets into place and do the same thing on the bottom edge of the door. Then I can cover those slots up. You won't even know the magnets are there until you shut the door and it snaps into place. There's the big cabinet. Still need to do some sanding, some pre-finishing before we can assemble it. But before I do that, I want to finish the small cabinet. So this is what we have. We've got two shelves here. I've got the PO box doors. I need to make something to inlay the door into so it can fit in the place. Now these are old, so they may stick. So the designer asked me to make an access panel here on the side. That way, if they stick, this can be removed and the items can still be removed out of the cabinet. So now that I've got all of this made, I gotta cut a big hole in it. Roll up my window, don't know where I'm bound. Driving by the river, there's a hole in the ground. Hand me down t-shirt, stick it on my back. I'm applying finish to the back panels now. That way, after the whole thing's assembled, if there's some expansion and contraction over the seasons, I won't have any areas that have bare spots because they didn't have any finish. And that could absolutely happen if I assembled it all together and then I applied the finish afterwards. Here comes the stressful part. I have to glue up this entire cabinet all at one shot. So to make it a little bit easier on myself, instead of using traditional wood glue, I'm gonna use some epoxy because it has a longer open time. Not looking too bad, huh? So we've got the two components here. We have the big one that has the door that swings open. We've got the different shelves here. I still need to make two trays that are gonna go into these bottom shelves. And remember, we put the magnets in the door so that will snap right into place. Then we have the smaller one here with the two PO box doors. And I did get those to work. That's really exciting. But just in case they stick over here on the side, we have the access panel that's held together with magnets. So someone can still reach in and get what they need, put this back into place. This is all flush here because the whole point is this is going to fit into a specific space. So there's going to be a wall on this side and a wall on this side. It's going to fit there. You won't see the panels. You won't see the sides. You'll just see this nice clean look here. I think it looks killer. So the next step is get all the dust off this thing, apply finish. And while I'm applying finish, I'll also work on those trays and we can wrap this thing up. The media cabinet is looking beautiful, but we got a couple more things to do. I still need to make two trays that will go inside it. So here's the plan. 
we're gonna have a tray that has a taller back and a shorter front, and it's gonna slope down. And then the front's gonna have some sort of cutout where you can grab with your hand. So I did what I normally do. I printed out a whole bunch of templates. So I'm gonna glue these onto my boards, go over to the bandsaw, cut all my pieces out. What an unbelievable project. We've got some beautiful curly walnut that wraps from the bigger piece over to the smaller piece. We have some amazing looking trays that pull in and out. And this door that has the magnets inside so it snaps right into place. But really the star of the show, these boxes over here, the PO box doors. Oh my gosh, seriously, how cool is that? This was a crazy project to build. And if you wanna get the bonus video that goes over some of the complications that I encountered with this, and there were definitely complications, or why I wore 30 sets of clothes during the making of this project, head on over to Patreon where you'll get exclusive content, bonus videos, behind the scenes, sneak peeks, and you'll get to see my thoughts on what went right and what went wrong. All your support over at Patreon helps me to make better videos and more videos that I can put here on YouTube. So I really thank you for your support. And regardless, hopefully you can get in your shop and build something awesome.